DMAs is a homebrew Game Boy game from developer FB1, originally released in 2018. This game was recommended to me by a friend, and I pretty much went into it blind. Now, just a heads up, I will be talking about spoilers. Uh, this is a relatively simple game, but experiencing it all myself for the first time was really satisfying. If you've been meaning to try this game, you might want to play it before watching this review. Also, I want to point out, I did not use any save states. I was able to enjoy playing through the entire game without save state spamming or anything like that. Okay, so I had two thoughts when I first started playing this game. Number one, the graphics are really, really teensy. And number two, I hate these controls. The physics of running, stopping, and jumping just feels so wrong. But I was here to try out the game. So in this game, the player goes from room to room, completing a small movement-based task to get to the next room. Each challenge in each room slowly builds on what was taught in the previous room. So I start to notice areas in the rooms that I can't reach yet. How do I get there? I don't know, maybe I'll figure it out later. Pretty soon the paths through the rooms begin to branch. I have choices. Some of them I investigate. Some of them I can't even get to. Maybe I'll be able to get to them sometime later. There's also these crystals. What are they? Points? Collectibles? I had no idea. Uh, but I wanted to collect them. Uh, some of them were easy to get to. Some of them made me say, nah, I'm not wasting my time trying to get that. So as I progress, the challenges are becoming more and more difficult. Some enemies are introduced. And I die. I die a lot. This game is a butt clencher. But at least there's generous checkpoints, which means anytime I die, I get to try again immediately. So here I am playing. I'm getting frustrated over and over again. But here's the thing. I don't want to stop playing. I just keep going. This game gives the player a major case of just one more try syndrome. So I'm going deeper and deeper into this world, and the atmosphere is thick. Like, I'm lost, I'm uncomfortable, and am I going the right way? Am I even getting anywhere? But I just want to keep exploring. I need to know what's in the next room, and the next, and the next. And then suddenly, I find an item. Now, <laughs> I know that the reality is the developer led me here, but it was done so well and so invisibly, like I was guided through the game, so like just an invisible path, uh, that I feel like I made it here all on my own. There are three items to find and collect. Each item gives the player a new ability that allows them greater mastery of the challenges in each room. And after all the items are collected, what used to feel like a guided tour around this massive planet now becomes a fully open world to explore. I can go anywhere, as long as I have the skill. And the new abilities allow for new challenges that I hadn't seen yet. And there are so many clever challenges. I was surprised and delighted over and over again. Uh, there are time-based puzzles, skill-based puzzles, puzzles that make the player say, yeah, okay, I can see where I need to go, but how do I get there? Puzzles that are literally invisible. <laughs> when I figured out how to get through uh, the invisible puzzles, it kind of blew my mind. It was so clever. So, uh, uh, no two rooms are exactly similar. No two challenges are identical. The game includes a map. Uh, by pressing the select button, I can see where I've been and which rooms I've collected crystals in. They're all marked with a check mark. Okay, so now I gotta get all the crystals. Also, I can see there are 90 rooms. 90 rooms, all perfectly interconnected with individual puzzles. 90 rooms guiding the player around, 
never giving me a boring, straightforward, guided path, but yet never allowing me to get frustrated and lost? <laughs> so I'm spending a lot of time just talking about the layout of rooms in this game because it's just so good. I mean, you could make a game with 90 rooms where the player starts at like a predefined entrance, like the same place every time, and then ends after they, the player collects the crystal and touches a predefined exit, for example. You know, like Bugs Bunny, Crazy Castle, those games. Uh, and that would be impressive enough. But this? Uh, to make this entire world all connected the way it is, and this good? It's just incredible. So I briefly mentioned the atmosphere. Atmosphere is hard to do well in video games, and this game does it really well. Uh, after starting in what felt like a well-lit laboratory environment, uh, soon became a dark planet surface, uh, then caves, and then underground pools of water. The entire game felt cohesive from start to end, uh, like just one big, all interconnected world. Uh, the graphics served the feel of the game just very well. As for the music, now the music is a little interesting. On a technical level, the music is not very impressive, but I can honestly say there was never a single time where I wanted to turn the music off. <laughs> there were even times when I was still humming it after I was done playing. All of the music just fits the game very well. Uh, there's quite a bit of music too. As you're exploring the planet, the music transitions as you move to and from each of the different environments. It's very well done. technical level. Uh, the game is a little glitchy, but I didn't find any bugs, if that makes sense. Like, there are the occasional graphical and control oddities here and there, uh, but nothing that affects gameplay. Uh, there was some slowdown, but I think it was just on one screen with a bunch of bats. And no crashes or soft locks or anything like that. It was well programmed and well designed. Now when I started this review, I mentioned my first impressions. Uh, one was the graphics. Unfortunately, the size of the graphics are the biggest weakness in this game. Uh, it's quite comfortable playing this on a modern, large, backlit screen, uh, but these graphics are not designed for the original Game Boy. Uh, for reference, Mario, like in the original Super Mario Land game, uh, Mario always felt pretty small on the Game Boy, and he's about four times the size of the player character in this game. Now, the size of the sprites wouldn't be too bad, but unfortunately, there's many places in the game where there's no clear separation between sprites and background. Uh, in fact, sometimes objects will completely blend in with the background. It's never enough to really cause issues during gameplay, you know, causing things to feel unfair, but yeah, it's a problem. Now, I don't like to poop on a game without giving some sort of suggestions on how I would fix it. Uh, the graphics issue is, a, is tricky for various reasons, like I don't think I'd recommend increasing the sizes of the sprites because that would cause the entire game to need to be remade, uh, reworked, rebalanced, uh, so even though it's all tiny, I keep it that way. Additionally, I don't think it's a simple case of make the objects dark and the backgrounds light because the environments change so much as you traverse the planet. Like, there's backgrounds that are dark, and there's other backgrounds that are really light. Like, that just wouldn't work. I wouldn't want to change, uh, like, the world design either. So, the best suggestion I've got is... Okay, any Game Boy developers listening, brace yourself. Would be to put a white border made up of a single line of white pixels around every object. So, like, the player character the bats, the saw blades, and so on. Uh, why is such a simple change such a big deal to implement? So every object in this game is made up of a single square, or tile, that is 8 pixels by 8 pixels in size. 
Uh, due to the way the Game Boy handles graphics, this makes it extremely simple to implement. <laughs> I actually did the same thing in the little game I made. All of the objects are a single 8x8 pixel tile in size. Adding a white border around every object would pretty much mean you'd need four times as many tiles in video memory for every object. And that includes every frame of animation for every object too. And, and this is the especially yucky part, it would mean adding all the code to move those four tiles around the screen together as if they were a single object. Now, even though that's a pretty major change in the code, once it's implemented, it would have no effect on the physics or the collision detection or the stage layout or anything else. Actually, after it's implemented, you could easily experiment further with even bigger sizes, uh, but I'm worried it would change the look and feel of the game too much. I think a single border of white pixels should be good. As for the controls, <laughs> so here's the thing. I mentioned that when I started playing the game, I hated the controls, and quite frankly, I still do. But, uh, but I got good at them. I got good at the controls. And when I did, I was able to stop fighting the controls and start focusing on the actual challenges in the game, mostly. I would still recommend making one incredibly minor change, uh, remove the sliding physics. Whether the character is on the ground or in the air, if the player releases the directional pad, then stop movement. Uh, this would be dead simple to implement and would have no negative effect on the game design. <laughs> Actually, it might make the game too easy? I don't know. I've just never been a fan of sliding physics, and I'm glad it mostly died off with Mega Man 2. Let's see, what else did I take notes about? Um, <laughs> I absolutely despise the bats. I was going to make a suggestion about removing them completely, or at least changing the spawn rate or something, but once again, I hated them, I got wrecked by them, but I was able, I was able to get past them every time. So maybe they were perfect. <laughs> I like how the entire right side of the map is just these fun bouncing puzzles. It really was a nice break from the rest of the challenges. Oh, I didn't talk about checkpoints yet. Uh, so the so the game uses a checkpoint system and unlimited tries. Thank goodness. I grew up in the 90s and I'm so tired of the whole extra lives mechanic. There's just no need for it anymore. Anyway, so there is an issue in that the checkpoints are very difficult to see at times. I'd suggest having a small animation on the checkpoint tiles, such as a simple sparkling effect. You know, just two frames of animation of pixels bouncing around should be enough just to draw the player's attention. Another issue is the placement of checkpoints. Uh, they're placed around the map quite liberally, but I still think the placement can be improved. Uh, for example, there were times where I'd perform a difficult move, uh, collect a crystal, and then frantically hunt around uh, for a checkpoint to save my progress, sometimes even going backwards to find one. This whole strategy of stopping actual gameplay to find a place to save kind of took me out of the game. Uh, it was just stressful. Now, I briefly considered trying to think of a way for the game to create automatic checkpoints upon entering or exiting every room, uh, but I can't think of a way that would work, or if it's even a good idea. Ultimately, the way checkpoints are implemented and the locations where they're placed, it works just fine in this game. Uh, maybe I'd add a few more to the game in a few key places. Whatever, it's nothing major. Okay, so back to the game. So even though I had plans to just try out this game real quick, I was not planning to play very much of it. But I just kept going. <laughs> Pretty soon, I had about half of the map filled in and many of the crystals collected. And the game just kept drawing me in, one room after another, challenge after challenge. Another nice thing about this game is if you see a room that's just too hard, you can just skip it and come back to it later. Uh, but anyway, pretty soon I was getting close to the end, <laughs> so now I had to finish it. After getting stuck in the last few rooms, I finally collected the last crystal. And I'm embarrassed to say I was completely confused about what to do next. 
like I actually had to look it up online. Uh, but in my opinion, the developer did do a good job showing the player where to go next. See, there's this one room that's unlike any other rooms in the game. And the developer did this thing that I love in video games, where you actually see the final room shortly after you start the game. You know, kind of like how in Pokemon Red and Blue, uh, they did this too, where you would see the, uh, what is it, the road to the Elite Four, like soon after you start the game. Like, this is where you're going to end up going. So cool. Uh, Metroid, what is it, Super Metroid does that too. Anyway, I remember going to that room, <laughs> even not that long before collecting the final crystal, and thinking to myself, huh, this room sure is strange. Oh well, I guess I can't do anything here, and then just forgot about it. But I blame myself, I'm just dense or something. Anyway, after I made it to the final room, I was able to use all 90 crystals to unlock the end boss. I had no idea there was an end boss. <laughs> Let me tell you about how great this end boss is. So there are no other bosses in this game, just the end boss. And I was worried that this game would do that thing that bad games do, where the player spends hours and hours learning and refining their skills, only to get to the end and discover that the final boss uses a completely different mechanic. But fortunately, this is a good game. All of the skills I learned were put to the test. And if I died, I got to try again instantly. Thank you so much. Also fun fact, I didn't learn until after I finished playing that the boss actually has a health bar way over on the right edge of the screen. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there's a new game plus mode where you begin the game with all the items already collected. Uh, I thought this would be kind of lame at first because, you know, like collecting the items is part of the game. Uh, but after completing the game, I get it. Uh, the Metroidvania aspect of exploring, finding items, and unlocking new abilities is really fun, but it doesn't add much when replaying the game. Uh, starting with the items allows the player to just focus on the challenges in each room right from the beginning. It was a good idea to add it. <laughs> and I think it's worth mentioning, in order to collect some footage <laughs> for this review, that I needed, uh, I had to replay the first few dozen rooms after I beat the game. And when I was doing that, I was having so much fun, I actually had to force myself to stop from replaying the entire game all over again. <laughs> okay, I think that was everything. In summary, DMAs is an outstanding game with simple but very effective visuals and music and an addicting gameplay loop. Although the graphics are sometimes difficult to see, and at times I feel like I'm fighting the controls, it doesn't take away from the fact that this is an expertly designed game that's a lot of fun. Also, I hate this room so much! <laughs>